Holonomic Drive, Part 3, Rotation. So in the previous couple of videos, we showed how to uh, make the Holonomic Drive work. Now we want to be able to make the robot also rotate. So looking at our robot, before every movement, the opposite wheels always went in the same direction. So to go forward, the left and right both went in the same direction. To go right, both the front and back wheels would move to the right. Now, when we want to rotate, the wheels need to be able to go in opposite directions. As you can see, when it turns to the left, opposite wheels are rotating in opposite directions. So this means changing the robot so that each motor is hooked up to the controller on its own. So you have to change the robot itself and also in LabVIEW Schematic Editor you will have to show how the motors are hooked up. Now there are many ways to program it, but we already have a holonomic uh, drive sub VI to do this for us. It stays pretty much the same. First we take the direction, change it into radians. Then we break that apart into an x and y by using the sine and cosine. We multiply it by the power, that's the third step. And then finally, we wire it into each of the motors. The front and back get the sine. The side wheels get the cosine. Now, the only difference is the wheels are pointing in opposite directions. To get the same information, we need to take the opposite of the power for opposite motors. Now, let's go into our teleop controller code. Pretty much stays the same. We have our sub VI for the holonomic drive and we feed in our motor information, but otherwise everything else stays the same. Now you could use other buttons, but I'm going to be reading from the right joystick. So I'm going to take the right X value from the joystick and that is what's going to control my rotation of the robot. Now I want to either be able to drive or rotate, so I'm going to need a case structure to be able to give me the opportunity to do one thing or another. So drag a case structure in there, and then I need to copy all of my drive code inside of the case structure. Alright, so I need to go ahead and fix some wires because some of them got disconnected, so rehook up my X and Y values into the code. Fix any other broken wires. Now, a couple ways of doing this. I'm going to make it so that if I'm not rotating, this is what's going to happen. So this actually needs to be the false case. And then the true case is going to be when I want to rotate and I'm going to put in that code. So this is the false code when I'm driving and not rotating. Now I need to wire into the question mark on the case statement the test to see if it will be true or false. So I'm going to test to see if we're getting information from the right X joystick. And we're going to see if that number is greater. Well, it could be zero. I'm going to use 10 so that if I accidentally bump it a tiny bit, it won't try to rotate. And because it could be positive or negative, I'm going to test it against the absolute value. So if I wanted to turn left or right, it might be negative 50 or positive 50. Either way, I want it then to rotate. Now we need to go into the true case and put in our rotating code, which is actually pretty easy. All we need to do is get a couple move motor blocks, wire them up to the motors, and then give them the rotate number that we're getting from the right X joystick.
All right, so I've wired up the motors. Now I just need to give the power from the joystick to rotate. Now we can test it out. Testing out just the normal driving, that still works. Now using the other joystick, we can use it to rotate the robot.